McAllister is aboard flight 573, due in London at Alistair now. Oh, he's not far from here. He's in a restaurant. Having dinner. Alone? I know, he's with a chink. Hmm? Uh, sorry, an oriental gentleman. The oriental should have dined uh, somewhere else. What, him too? He's a witness. Well, a couple, I didn't know there was going to be two of them, you know. I mean, uh, I figured it was just going to be in and out, you know what I mean? Are you sick, Herbert? Headache? Wet hands, rapid pulse. I leave off, will you? I mean, I got this cab for you, didn't I? I then didn't call you until the location was set up for you, did I? Look, I know my job, Dargo. Are you sure you will recognize McAllister when he comes out of the restaurant? Ah, sure, I'm sure I'll recognize him. I've turned him from the airport, haven't I? Be certain. I dislike killing the wrong person. Professional pride. Look, uh... Isn't it enough that we get the old man set up? I mean, why does the other fellow have to come into it? I mean, it isn't in my contract, you know. It's too dangerous. $100,000 a day, Moto. That's what Beta Oil's been losing ever since this mess started six months ago. What luck are you having stopping it? Plenty. All bad. Our biggest problem is Satan's cigarette. Satan's cigarette? Someone torched off our number four well in the Wadi Shamar province of Persia four months ago. It's still burning. It's the biggest well fire in the Middle East since the, the devil's blowtorch in Saudi Arabia. It burned for six months, flames 500 feet. They said it could have burnt for 100 years. Satan's cigarette is its first cousin. It sounds very well organized, Mac. Exactly. Vita Oil has its lease coming up in the Wadi Shamar province for renewal. Now we certainly can't renew. It's all part of the pattern. If Peter Oil is forced out of the Middle East, others will follow. Exactly. Already there are reports of sabotage and Dutch interests in El Haza. It's spreading. You used to look at pretty girls, now you keep turning around looking behind you. Someone tried to kill me in Persia last week. Well, it's about time you got some help. I contacted the international police. They said a special uh, agent from Interpol would contact me as soon as I arrived in London. You've been speaking with him all evening. What, you? Interpol? When? You and I had dinner five years ago in Hong Kong. Since then. Looks like Moto and McAllister will be working together again. Life's little ironies. You and I on the same team again after all these years. Well, you don't seem very pleased. Tired. Why do they want you dead, Mike? I have the slightest idea. Look, I'm, uh, I'll give you a full rundown in the morning. I never could sleep on airplanes. Hey, waiter, check, please. Uh, thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, we're lucky. There's a taxi. Hey, uh, can I drop you any place? No, I think I'll go for a walk. Hey, uh, cabbie. Here's a come. I'll see you at the hotel tomorrow for breakfast. Right. See you. It will not be too difficult to intercept. Look, why don't we leave it alone, eh, Gaff? You are worse than the Oriental, Hobart. Your panic back there is the reason he still lives. Like him, you wish to run. Like him, perhaps, you will learn. Learn? What? I mean... No one can run faster than death. But what are you gonna do? Just obey orders. Drive, Hobart. You take your handle, eh? Please, Dargo. You have almost wrecked this operation. Now you want to slide out like a snake. Well, God blind me, we got the oil man, didn't we? Besides, the chink ain't in my contract. You have just written yourself a new contract. Just down a side street. There are none of them for over a mile. Or well, maybe he'll dodge into a building. No, he runs in panic to get away. He wants to get away as far as possible. How can you be so sure? I am an expert on panic. In the camps, they used to run blindly from the guns, anywhere to hide. They ran into the long, flat brick buildings without any windows. They would read the signs, danger gas, but they could only read them when they were inside the buildings. Hey, look, Darko. Hey, let's forget about this old angel, eh? I mean, uh, let's just track him and uh, find out who he is and then set him up later, you know, like the other one. You are sweating, Hobart. It must be a warm night.
on, get out! In there and cover the roof. But he's gone in there. He's frightened to death, I told you. He's trying to hide. He'll run back down and I'll be waiting. And this time, Ovat, no error. Okay, okay, no error. And you say, please! I didn't kill her. I was just a driver! I'll tell, tell you anything you want to know, and just take that knife away. Do us a favor. Take that knife away, will you? Try to relax. Come on now. Relax a bit. Here, have a cigarette. Relax. Who are you? I ask the question, now you answer. He don't look to me like a fellow who runs. Often you run away from a man in order to catch him. Now, what did you know about my friend? Only that he was an oil man. That his name was Mac... McAllister. Do you know why his death was ordered? No. How did you find him? They just told me he was flying into London. I followed him. They? The people who hired you? Yeah, yeah. Who are they? I don't know. Only Dargo knows. You mean you work for somebody you don't know? No, well, that's hard to believe. Dargo, the man you work with tonight? Yeah. He's searching for you downstairs. He thought you'd run in here and panic. You mean he's waiting for me to come out of a building with one entrance?
You don't have to brief me much. After you called me to meet you here at the cover office, I stopped for coffee and read all about it. Pacing won't help. You'll need the energy. Ginelli, did you check Scotland Yard? They came up empty in McAllister's hotel room. Any fingerprints on the cab? Just yours, and a lot of smudges, and nothing on the briefcase either. That was a close one last night. I'm alive because I decided to walk. Two professionals in a stolen cab. McAllister give you anything on the Persian oil mess? He said he was going to give me a complete rundown this morning. I'd like a look at his personal effects. There might be... there might be something. Homicide is a yard matter. The Persian oil case is ours. I'll set a meeting with Chief Inspector Marlow this afternoon. McAllister and I worked intelligence together. Once he saved my life. When the time came, I couldn't return the favor. All I can do now is to get his killer. Anything on him? Just a name, Dargo. Probably a nickname or an alias. Dargo. D-A-R-G-O, probably. You can check his mug in the foreign agent's book. I'll check that name in our European moniker nickname file. D-A-R, D-A-R-G. Here's one. I think we hit pay dirt, Moto. Here's the name, Dargo. Rather a CD character. Real name, Engel. Helmut Engel. Check an Engel in the mug book. E-N-G-E-L. That's the man. Helmut Engel, alias Dargo. Wanted by the War Crimes Commission for murder. German Army 1941, second lieutenant. Served in the 365th Schutzstaffel Division until war's end in 1945. Came on a major in the SS. Next time, idiot, the job cannot be botched. I've told you, the Oriental will die. How is my affair? But when is ours? And now that we know his identity, it must be soon. Last night's mistake was not my fault. The driver was made of clay. Do not blame Hobart for your mistakes, imbecile. A simple, uncomplicated murder. For this we choose the best, the great Dargo. A juvenile fresh out of reform school could have done better. In the stomach, Marcalesco, one dies very thirsty and slowly, like a plant drying out in the Sahara sun. In the old days, I heard the screams, like music of a happy, gay polka. Perhaps with you, I make polka music? I would suggest that we sit down and stop behaving like a United Nations assembly. Ozio is right. As in war, we do not waste our blood. We let the enemy waste his. In our group, many countries are represented. In order to rid themselves of their hate, periodically these countries fight. We cannot afford this luxury of self-destruction. Do we understand each other? Yes. The situation in Wadi Shamar progresses well, and that is the state in Persia with the main beta oil holdings. Our agents in Tehran and Shiraz report that sabotage is going according to plan. With beta oil out of the Middle East, others will follow. Precisely, Magda, with our help, of course. Already the Shardar, the chief executive of Wadi Shamar, has informed beta oil he does not wish to renew their leases. And when he arrives in London shortly, he will sign with us. Why are you certain? Because I am his personal secretary, and I can exercise certain influences. You mean he trusts you? In a few years. Our organization will control every major oil lease in the Persian Gulf. From there, the rest of the world. But right now, there is the matter of the Oriental. We've had a little on the beta oil case, but not much, as you can see, of the yard's cup of tea. After all, Persia is a few kilometers from here. 
McAllister's death brings a red up to your front doorstep, doesn't it, Inspector Marlowe? Yes, it looks that way. What's this Foreign Office memo on an oil conference coming up shortly? Routine security request. The Yard covers any government meeting involving foreign delegates. Oil conservation. They're trying to come up with a plan to conserve the world's oil reserves. It'll fizzle out, of course. You can't get more than two nations to agree on anything. Who's going to represent Persia at the conference? The list is in the file somewhere. Ah, yes. The United States, France, Great Britain, Japan. It's not much of a list. I don't think most nations look upon oil as one of the world's major problems at the moment. McAllister was to attend for the United States. Who will replace him? David Lennox, chairman of the board of Beta Oil. He's flying over today or tomorrow. Oh, yes. Representing the Middle East, the Shardar of Wadi Shamar. Sounds like a Kipling poem. We'd appreciate your cooperation on this matter. You mean because of this ruddy Gunga Din chap? This ruddy Gunga Din chap controls the Beta Oil leases. The only possible motive for McAllister's death or the trouble in Persia is the renewal of the beta oil leases. Mm. I'll assign Halliday from Special Branch to work with you. He's a good man. Can I drop you off somewhere, Ginelli? No, thanks, Inspector. I'll stay here and check McAllister's suitcase with Moto. You won't find anything my people didn't. We've been in this business quite a while, you know. Good afternoon, Inspector. Good afternoon. We better check this out. Just an ordinary carton of cigarettes? Why? McAllister didn't smoke. Something in this one. It's a tube of some sort. Expecting anybody? No. Yes? Jonathan Westring here. Being a bit cautious today, aren't we, Ginelli? My friend Moto had a busy night, Westring. So I heard. Glad he's still with us. Hello. Moto, this is Jonathan Westring, British Intelligence. He and I have worked a few cases in the past. Hi. Indirectly, I'm working on this case with you people, so I thought I'd come by and pay my respects. Why is British intelligence involved? This oil meeting is to be held at Westring Manor, so somewhat naturally, the Foreign Office asked me to play host. Oh, so you're the famous Lord Westring's son. Second son. Your father's death last year was a great loss of the world. Yes. Although I must admit, being the son of a leading world statesman has its drawbacks. Father's footsteps were difficult to follow. I can understand that. Any leads on last night's trouble? We know who killed McAllister. A man named Helmuth Engel, alias Dargo. Mm, that's quick work. You found him yet? No, but we will. We are primarily interested in finding the people who hired him. Anything that will affect our end, the conference, I mean. The most embarrassing for the British government if anything uh, irregular were to occur. To break this case would embarrass anybody. Why not? Well, I better be off to the airport. I have to meet this fellow Lennox who's replacing McAllister. And as the unofficial host without portfolio, I'm in charge of the red carpet. Well, I'll see you at Westering Manor. Be a pleasure. And uh, if you need any additional help on this case, please let me know. I'll do that. It's a code of some kind. The last two sequences contain letters. DL 423, SWS 424. I think your old friend McAllister didn't quite level with you, Moto. He obviously knew something important enough to code and conceal rather carefully. 962 212, 97 220, 
It doesn't follow any pattern. Might as well be written in Persian for all the help it's giving us. I think we need more information on beta oil. We better have a chat with that uh, chairman of the board, Phil. Well, it's nice to see you here in London, Mr. Lennox, but I could wish the circumstances could have been more pleasant. A terrible thing about your man, McAllister. Yes, terrible. Have you caught his killer yet? Not yet, but we'll get him. Scotland Yard is quite efficient in such matters. Peter Oil will spend any amount of money to solve this case, Mr. Westring. You see, McAllister was one of our top executives and also a close personal friend. I understand how you feel, Mr. Lennox. I'll arrange a meeting with Mr. Moto. He's the Interpol man on the case. Uh -huh. Are you a policeman too, Mr. Westring? No, Miss Powell. Intelligence is my speciality. Although my father used to tell me I never displayed too much of it. Have you been to London before? No, I haven't. If Mr. Lennox doesn't keep you too busy being a secretary, I hope I'll have the pleasure of showing you around. Oh, well, I'd love that. Perhaps, Mr. Lennox, McAllister told you something that might be important to the case. Have you thought about it? I don't know what to think. I know that he drew a blank on our Persian problem. And that situation is quite serious, isn't it? Very serious. You know, we could ruin Beat Royal if the trouble isn't stopped. Do you think that McAllister's death is tied in in any way? Well, according to Moto, there's no doubt of it. Of course, there can be many reasons for murder. Gambling, women, debts, and so on. Not Russell McAllister. He was a great guy. One of the finest I've ever known. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks, Ginelli. Listen, I owe you a spaghetti dinner. I hate spaghetti. Make it a bottle of scotch. Did you get a look to see who was in the car? I've been too fast. I better get going. Maybe I'd better go with you. You shouldn't be out alone. I'll try to be more careful next time. They want you real bad. They must be desperate, trying a stunt like that in broad daylight. I was just a little bit careless. Keep in touch. Your state of health commences to worry me. <laughs> OK. One moment, please. Moto, my dear fellow, your timing's perfect. David Lennox has just flown in from the States, wants to talk to you about the McAllister affair. Fine, I want to talk to him too. Come along. How's that for timing, Mr. Lennox? Mr. Moto wants to see you too. Miss Powell. Miss Powell. Mr. Lennox. Mr. Mr. Moto. I'll come straight to the point, Mr. Morrow. I want you to get the guy that killed McAllister. Money's no object, just get him. Whiskey and soda. I love one. Understand me, Mr. Morrow? Get him dead or alive. I'm sure Mr. Morrow understands your feelings, Mr. Lennox. Miss Powell, thank you. As soon as I heard that uh, McAllister had been murdered, I hopped the first plane over here to see that this case got some fast action. That's what I want, Mr. Morrow. Speed, action. Three branches of law enforcement are on the case, Mr. Lennox. Great, great. Get them all on it. Get Sam Spade in the shadow if you need him. <laughs> we all men stick together. I've been in this racket since Tulsa was a tank town, and I've never let a friend down yet. Well, that's commendable. And when you do get this guy, 
Just give me five minutes alone with him, will you? I think you better leave that matter to us. Ah, oh, nonsense. Listen, I may be getting on in years, but uh, there's still plenty of life in the old dog yet. Ask her. You think I hired her because she can type? Please leave me out of this, Mr. Lennox. I hired her because she's as pretty as a new oil well. Keeps a fellow young, Mr. Moto. Uh, Mr. Westering, I think now is an appropriate time for a personally escorted tour of Westering Manor. Hmm? Oh, certainly. Miss Powell. Well, Mr. Moto, what's on your mind? You embarrassed her and get rid of them. You catch on. All right, my friend, what have you got? Now, this sequence of numbers mean anything to you? We found it hidden in McAllister's personal effects. No, it means nothing to me. Why, you figure it's important? Vital. McAllister was onto something. And those numbers are the key. Hey, wait a minute. We use numbers in our shipping code. Saves us a fortune in cable costs and uh, simplifies our inventory. How does it work? We have a master code book. For example, 98 is a drilling rig in Borneo. When the boys have any trouble, all they do is to cable the head office with a number, and we know what parts the ship and where. As a matter of fact, McAllister introduced this system when he first joined Peter Oil. But uh, don't you get carried away, Mr. Moto. Our numbers only go up to a thousand. Not to uh, hundreds of thousands like that list there. What is the number 423? Well, it's a pipeline in the Borneo field. Why? 423 has the letters D-L in front of it. Now, it could just be a coincidence. But those are your initials, aren't they? Oh, this is simply beautiful, Mr. Moto. The young lady seems to approve of our little cottage. I don't blame her. Would you like the half-crown tour? Thank you, another time. I just came out to say goodbye. Did Lennox give you anything new? Oh, just a little. I'd like to hear about anything that might affect our conference next week. Downing Street gets a bit crotchety if these foreign meetings don't go off as planned. We'll try to protect Downing Street's sense of humor. I say, that looks rather official. That is the only copy of our inventory book we brought with us, Mr. Moto. Got it with your life. Rather an unfortunate choice of words. My life's had questionable value lately. How are you getting back to town? I've ordered a cab. I won't hear of it. My chauffeur will drive you. Scotland Yard. Oh, yeah. You're Mr. Murta? Yes. Uh, Chief Inspector Marlowe's putting on the oil case with you. Please, come on in. Thank you, sir. Sorry I missed you this afternoon at the yard. That's all right. Do you know anything about codes? Codes? Yes, cryptography, that sort of thing. Oh, yes, sir. Well, uh, perhaps that'll keep. Something's come up and we have a date. Date. Yes, sir. An informer called in from a waterfront dive. Might be worth checking. A date. It could be. Are you with me, sir? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Now, this chap said he had some information for us. Most important, he said. <laughs>
Uh, for you? Mm, brandy. Two brandies, please. Where's this guy? Oh, he'll be showing up. I don't think your man's gonna make it. Oh, he'll turn up. Really? bright and you're not holiday you're getting brighter I was a little careless now you've got the whole picture move through the archway okay you're the boss Folks, it's just a disorderly drunk. Right, that's all. Any problem? It's a breeze. Good work, Chuck. What about Halliday? I didn't kill him. Bad business knocking off yard people. I take him. Don't be so eager, Dargo. He enjoys his work, was he? We want to interrogate him first. Everything arranged? The Wadi Shamar people arrive tomorrow. The American came in today, along with the German and French delegates tonight. The Japanese ambassador called and said their man would be along shortly. All right. Dargo, wake him up. That's all, Chapel. It is. I was just beginning to like him. Ask him what he has learned about the Persian oil affair. Why don't you ask me direct? I don't need any middle man. Be polite. I don't know anything. It wasn't polite. He won't speak. It's a waste of energy. Drago doesn't mind. Kill him. In my own way and in my own time. for a swim.
How are you feeling? Well, the ambulance doctor said no bones were broken, but they could have fooled me. This is the real Jim Halliday. Wish it had been you who dropped by earlier. No, I'm sorry. I was uh, waylaid on the way to your place. Woke up in an alley. Rather embarrassing. You're telling me. After you called me, I found him in an emergency hospital. Did you contact the newspapers? Oriental's body, fished out of Thames, identified as I. A. Moto, then a nice obituary. You've done quite a bit in your time. They're running the death story on page one. Would you mind telling me what your plan is? Ginelli. The name was Zier, probably an Arab, about five foot eight, 140 pounds. See what you can dig up on him. He play host tonight? He seemed to be one of the leaders. Holiday, let's get over to my flat. We still have an awful lot of work to do tonight. Hmm. I have a call into the Japanese ambassador. I'll wait here for it. Japanese ambassador? I'm going to attend that oil conference as his personal representative. That's going to be one of the most difficult cases of all times. What's well, starting off to be a small thing? Wait a minute. The light on my desk was on before I left tonight. What the devil are you doing here? Do you always enter a room like that? Maxine. Did he hurt you? No, I don't think so. My dignity's in awful shape. Well, it looks fine from here. Maxine Powell, this is Inspector Holliday. How do you do? Hello. I'm sorry I belted you. You look positively overwrought. Are you um, in the habit of wandering around strange men's apartments? Mr. Modo is not strange. You are friends. Yes, we're friends. It's a habit you ought to break. You could lose either your health or your honor. And you wouldn't protect either one. Maxine, how'd you get in here? The building manager. I told him it was urgent and that I'd wait. But finally, I figured you wouldn't be back here tonight. And I was just getting ready to leave when this steamroller rolled in. <laughs> no lasting harm done. Here, I'm supposed to give you this. It's a list of the key beta oil executives. Mr. Lennox thought it might be of some use. Did anyone besides Lennox know you were coming here tonight? No, I don't think so. Why? They think they killed me tonight. I want them to keep on thinking it. Will you help us on this case? Well, yes, in any way I can. I want you to spread the word among conference delegates that you have important information on the Vito Oil case. Will you do that? Now, just a minute, Moto. Using her as bait could get a little sticky. I don't want you to let her out of your sight. Well, with this steamroller on my side, I'll take my chances. Good girl. Just say that the information will be given at the proper time. Oh, you want someone to make a move? You have the makings of a good agent. Well, it, it might be fun. Yes, it might be, but I somehow doubt it. I gave my people this number in case something came up. Good. Hello there. Yes. Just a minute. It's the Arabian Nights stakeout. The place closed half an hour ago. Three men just came out, two Arabs and a big man. Those are three of the men we're after. What about Dargo? They could still be in there. My boys radioed this in, and then it was relayed to me. They're following the three now. No change in orders. Look, Moto, if you're going into that saloon after Dargo, I'm coming too. Let them think that everything's going according to plan. Now that we know Dargo's hideout, we can get him when we want him. All right. I'll take Miss Powell back to Westering Manor. I'll tell them I've been assigned by Scotland Yard routine security. Fine. Waiter. Sir? More coffee, please. Yes, sir. Have you read the story on our friend Moto? Of course. You don't look very pleased, Magda. I did not know this assignment would call for me to be a servant. It will not be for long. I arranged it so you could be here in case of any unforeseen eventualities. Did you meet the Shadow's plane? At daybreak this morning. Where's the old man now? A little respect, please. After all, he's the chief of state. He's asleep. Airplane travel tires him. He will join the rest of the conference delegates later in the day. I'll be glad when all this is over and done with. Patience, my friend. We are close to victory. 
Driving out here, the Shardar told me he will renew the oil leases with our organization, not with beaters. In a few days, we can relax and take over the largest oil operation in the world. Oh, good morning. Good morning, Miss Powell. A pleasant night, I trust. Oh, quite comfortable, thank you. Have uh, you met Inspector Halliday? How do you do, Inspector? Sir? Routine security, Scotland Yard. Of course. It's quite important to feel secure. Hmm. Yes, sir. While we're on the subject, Miss, I shouldn't bandy about the information you say you have. It might place you in jeopardy. Information about what? Well, the information I have is important to every member of the oil conference. May I ask what type of information you're referring to? Well, I really can't go into it now, Mr. Hussein, but uh, I can tell you it has an important bearing on the beta oil case. Yes, I think that morning news story worked fine. What about Holiday? Anything from him? He cleared it with Inspector Marlowe. So if anybody checks, he's on routine security assignment at Westering Manor. I think he's enjoying securing the Powell girl. She's already dropped a few tidbits to the delegates. So far, no action. I want them to make their move at that conference. And if we bug them enough, they will. Did you find out anything about Wazir Hussein? Wazir. Special member of Wadi Shamar government, assistant to the Shadra. He's in a beautiful spot to sell the old boy out. Also the latest owner of that joint, the Arabian Nights. That was just his front. What about the Japanese ambassador? He'll cooperate, but said to please not do anything to embarrass his government. I'll try not to. Here's your identification portfolio. You are due at Westering Manor this afternoon. Your name is Takura. Beautiful. But your excellence, you told Mr. Lennox, this is ago. not fair. I have right. noted. Mineral water. Oh. Yes. Mr. Lennox, there is an official conference. Mr. Takura, this is indeed an honor and a very great pleasure. Welcome to Westering Manor. Thank you, Mr. Westering. You are most kind. Come in. However, the honor is mine. Meeting a distinguished son of a distinguished father. That's uh, very kind of you, sir. Have we met before? In Tokyo, perhaps? I think not, Mr. Westering. Rogers, uh, see to the luggage. Yes, sir. Come along. We're all having a drink in the drawing room. You are most kind. <laughs> Can I get your cocktail refilled, Miss Powell? No, thank you. It's a lovely party, isn't it? If you don't mind my saying so, you are the only lovely thing about it. Oh, these state factions. I attend so many of them. Yes, I guess you do. Ah, this must be the last delegate to arrive, the Japanese gentleman. Excuse me a moment, please. Certainly. You uh, don't have to be that nice to him, you know. I'm sorry, I'm new at this cloak and dagger stuff. According to the information we got from Janelli this morning, Wasi Hussein is a very dangerous man. I don't want you getting in over your head. Holiday, why don't you go protect somebody else? I'm doing just fine. All right. I'll try to be around if you need me. I'm sorry. It's just that, well, Wasir and the other people, they, well, they seem so nice. Mm. This is the big league. They're always nice in front of witnesses. Maxine, Jim, I'd like you to meet Mr. Takura, the Japanese delegate. Oh, how do you do? Miss Powell's one of the Beta Oil representatives. A pressure, Miss Powell. Inspector Halliday's with Scotland Yard. How nice for him. If you'll excuse me, I'll just go around and make sure that everyone's got what they want. Right. Certainly. Yes. Maxine? Do you know a guy named Moto? Smile, you're making small talk. <laughs> I never Why would have recognized you. Well, unless you're you about with here. Neither am I. The Shah and Lennox seem to be having a heated discussion. You mean, Your Excellency, that you've already made your decision not to re-sign the leases with Beta Oil? Precisely, Mr. Lennox. Excuse, please. Yes. I hope the disguise is good enough. Of course it is. And don't forget the name Matahari, Takura. We don't want to blow the whole thing in the first hour, do we? Uh. I'm afraid that there is very little left to discuss. My state of Wadi Shama depends on your oil production to survive. For the last six months, there have been no profits. I'm sure you realize, Your Excellency, that by your decision, you could easily ruin one of the world's largest corporations. That is unfortunate, Mr. Lennox. But if I were to continue our leases with Beta Oil, it would be the ruin of Wadi Shamar. 
My own people, I'm afraid, are more important to me than beta oil. Under the circumstances, you have made the only possible decision, Your Excellency. I'm afraid so, Mr. Westering. Others will be making substantial offers for your oil rights, Your Excellency. In fact, I believe your own special assistant, Wazir Hussein, has such a plan in mind. Wazir and I have discussed his offer. It is feasible, it is fair, and he is a countryman with the interests of his people at heart. I think I will accept his offer. I believe so. Excellency, Mr. Lennox, I have overheard your conversation. If I may humbly suggest, I believe you should reconsider. May I ask why, Mr. Takura? Japanese rank number 10 in oil holdings in the Middle East. Since we have less to lose than any other power, we are more careful. I don't understand, Mr. Takura. American lady from Better Oil tells me she has certain information on the situation. Perhaps it will affect all of us. Perhaps we should listen. Very well, Mr. Takura. We shall discuss it at our official conference tomorrow. Perhaps, Excellency, we could complete our arrangements this evening. I have the contracts prepared for signature. Oh, let us wait until tomorrow and hear what the lady has to say. As Mr. Takura so aptly put it, my decision might affect all of us here. It is well to be cautious. Mr. Takura, I have the feeling that you generally play a much better game. Yes, sir, Mr. Westring. I do not think clearly certain problems have arisen. Perhaps I can be of help. After all, this is my home. Perhaps you can. These, um problems you mention have to do with the discussion you had with the Shah of Wadi Shamar, the Persian oil trouble. Very much so. Then I gather you only accepted my offer of a game of chess out of politeness. Yes, sir. I am this conference's official host. I'd like to be informed of any proof of criminal action. I do not have specific proof. Then I would suggest, Mr. Takura, that you and the young lady keep quiet until such time as you do. She's gone. Who is gone? The American girl, Mr. Takura. My dear fellow, it can't be anything serious. Perhaps she's just gone out for an evening stroll. Nothing to get excited about. I was getting myself a bite of dinner. She was talking to a couple of delegates and then gone. You have searched everywhere, Mr. Holliday? Inside and out. A kid like that playing Mata Hari. If anything happens to her, I shall never forgive myself. Would suggest you calm down, Mr. Holliday. I was afraid of this very thing happening. Mr. Takura, would you mind telling me what all this is about? Lesser, perhaps, Mr. Westering. Not now. Hello? Miss Powell, my dear girl, the people here have been absolutely frantic about you. Mr. Takura? Certainly, he's right here. He wants to talk to you, Mr. Takura. Thank you. Yes? Miss Powell? I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Dukura. Can you meet me right away? I suppose so, if it is urgent. I've uncovered some new information regarding the beta oil case. It's important that I see you. She has some new information on the beta oil case. Very well, Miss Powell. I'll meet you. Where are you? I'm at a place called the Arabian Nights. Can you come now? Yes, Miss Powell. Right away. That is good, Miss Powell. Very good. Move. If you really wish to find out what this is all about, I suggest you join me later at a place called the Arabian Nights. Very well. Please bring the Shah and Mr. Lennox with you. Inspector Holliday will accompany you. He knows exactly what it is. You mean, Mr. Decore, you're going into that place alone? Yes, Inspector Holliday. It is the only way.
and I go. Ah, your friend, Mr. Takura, has risen to the bait. Dago. I am uh, here, Mr. Takura. Correction. I'm not Mr. Takura. And you're not Dago. You're Helmuth Engel. Both of them. But that cannot be. Moto is dead. No, Moto is alive. Or am I Moto's ghost? But I killed you, Moto. Please, doctor. Just like your driver, you also say please. Doctor. Answers first, then doctor. Swine. Why did you kill McAllister? For Dr. Hunt. I'll wait. I have more time. Vasya ordered his death. Why? He and Wasia had big fight about splitting profits. McAllister wanted more, wanted to control things. Wasia wanted the same. And after that, they never trusted each other. Wasia felt that after they gained control of the beta oil, McAllister would have him killed. And uh, when McAllister had finished his usefulness, uh, Vasya had him killed first. Are you trying to say that McAllister was involved in the oil conspiracy? You fool! McAllister started it! You lying man! Oh. It's the truth I'm telling you. Shot, eh? Not nice to hear about him, old friend. Uh, uh. 
Gentlemen, please come in. Please. Take chairs. Isn't this a little irregular, Mr. Takura? Your cooperation is deeply appreciated, Excellency. What's the idea of dragging us out at this time of night, Mr. Takura? Please, be patient. I trust that our patience will be rewarded. Mr. Hussein, you especially shall be rewarded. Where's Maxine? To the storeroom. May I ask where Mr. Westering is? He said he was following in another car. Very well. Say, can we have some light? In due time. Oh. Maxine, are you all right? I have never been so glad to see anyone in my whole life. No mind. It's all over now. Oh. Want to know something, Halliday? What's that? I don't want to play Mother Hari anymore. Come on. So, we use the girl as a decoy in order to bring the group into the open. That's why you are all here, because this is where the case will end. The key to this case lies in this coded paper found on McAllister's possession. The last three numbers on this code list represent dates. First, number 14, 205, February 5th. That's a pipeline in um, Alves, Persia. Yes. The pipeline was dynamited on that date. Why, McAllister was there on that date. Yes, Mr. Lennox. Excellency, if you will check Mr. Hussein's itinerary on that date, you will find that he was there too. That is true, isn't it, Wasir? The next listing is four on 312. That would be well number four in Wadi Shema, Satan's cigarette. This list is a coded schedule of the entire beta oil sabotage campaign. In examining McAllister's dossier, I found that he had been to each of the sabotage locations on the corresponding dates. Then that can only mean that... Yes, Mr. Lennox. McAllister was one of the leaders, along with Wazia Huzin. I wouldn't. The last two numbers on this list were to be the coup de grace of the campaign. DL-423 and SWS-424. David Lennox and the Shadar of Wadi Shama. And I suppose that Mr. Lennox and I were to be assassinated on that date. No, Excellency, only... Only if you refuse to sign the oil leases with Mr. Hussein's group. Then with your death, Hussein, as your assistant, would have the power to sign for you. You have misused an important trust, Wasir. For this you will pay. There is one other matter. There have been leaks in this case from the beginning. Only one man would have known that Inspector Barlow of Scotland Yard had assigned Inspector Holliday to work with me. A man who could use his position of trust to get any undercover information that he wanted. Blasted, Mr. Takura. Who is he? It's nice of you to make it, Westering. Come on in. Join the party. All governments have agreed that this conspiracy should not be publicized. I am greatly relieved to hear that. After all, one of the leaders was a countryman of mine. And another was a friend of mine. Mr. Lennox, my official apologies to Beta Oil. And of course, we shall be only too pleased to sign a renewal of all our leases with you. Thank you, Your Excellency. And uh, thank you for your attention. Gentlemen. Mr. Moto, Beta Oil will extend its official appreciation to all of you. But in the meantime, I want you to accept my deepest and sincerest thanks. Thank you. My only sadness is McAllister. Goodbye. Bye. Janelli, give me a month off. I'm beat. Can't. Why? Got orders for you from Geneva. They want you in Cairo by next Monday. Cairo? Yes. 
You see, it seems there's this group of... Just uh, a minute. I've got till Monday. <laughs> Where are you off to? Well, I thought I might see a little bit of London before I leave. Why don't you let me show you London? 